All right, welcome back to In His Mind. So, yeah, this thing doesn't seem to be loading up or anything, but um, I'll show it real quick. The man that actually went, John Galtz. I'll link the video from Better Bachelor down below, but that's kind of the whole entire point here. I'm uh, trying to re-download YouTube, which I think is actually um, part of the problem there. So, yeah, eating the bandwidth and all that up. So anyway, um, I think it is a good solution. It's a it's good for your well-being and mental health to check out from society if things were to fall apart. But here's the problem. If everyone or too many people were to just simply drop off and leave, dip out, um, the phrase of the whole, you know, going John Walter or whatever. Uh, again, I'll need to look more into that, but simply dipping from society, that raises up uh, serious questions as far as what's going to happen to everyone else and how should we all best continue when you've got so many people just checking out. And when I say people, I mean men. I don't think women check out of society the same way. They would likely become um, closed off inside their own home rather than just simply going off into the middle of a forest or somewhere else where there's no civilization. So indoors rather than leaving civilization. Not exactly the same thing. Now, I want to say that mental health and our well-being is important, but when it comes down to it, and this is the problem, the heart of the problem that I have been thinking about for the past couple of years now is whether or not what the healthy amount of limits should be for taking breaks from society and all that. The Bible only talks about taking time aside to revitalize yourself in, inside of, you know, not inside the Bible, but inside of our lives with God and specifically Jesus and to take time and set it aside for that communication. It, I'll see what I can find as far as direct scripture from that, but everything that I have read would be coming from the apostles and Paul. As far as the Old Testament, it doesn't really talk about that. It talks about promise of deliverance, a promise for a redeemer, and for someone to fulfill prophecy. But as far as well, there's also the stories, too, where Israel was led around in the desert for X amount of years, where the older generation was basically they went around until the older generation passed on. I do not know the exact phrase for that. Time was needed, and that generation were unbelievers because of going into the promised land they did not believe that they could take it and then God pretty much passed on this information to Moses and who passed it on to the others it's the only reference that's coming to mind here but that's not entirely what I'm talking about the problem is how should Christians handle checking out from society if things were to go south and I think the, the problem is we, we're we not supposed to. We're not supposed to just leave when things get rough. That we're supposed to be a part of it and we're supposed to do what we can to be like Christ in the darkness, so to speak. To, to live our lives in such a way that we bring glory to God no matter what happens. For, you know, better or worse, God has the situation in hand. And that's hard because for someone like me, where it's like, you're just trying to get your life situated and you don't have much, you, you have a home and a job, it's like, you're not trying to lose or sacrifice anything, but you're also trying to live up to what you believe in. So that raises up the question of like how to proceed, how to handle this when the country goes south. Frankly, our country has been through a lot of stability and I want to say generosity, grace, and wealth. There's a lot that comes into this. But in the past 20, 30 years, there's been a lot of degeneracy that has crept into our nation. 
I haven't been around to see everything, I know that. I mean, my army years and all that have actually played a big part of this. So there's issues like um, the stock market crash of 2000, sorry, the housing market crash of 2008. I don't know of anything else that was massive that impacted things to that degree, with the exception of COVID that happened 2020. And I've heard a couple things about housing crisis again here, but I don't really, I don't really pay attention to the news, so other people would be better off talking about these things than me. But, yeah, I'll be using them here as a bit of an example as far as, like, if things were to go south, were to go south even more so, what next? Frankly, I think, as hard as it is, we should be a part of our community to do what we can. And even if we don't have a community to be a part of, to step out and to help others. Now, I understand checking out because part of me wants to do that and I've been thinking about that for the whole past year just because things haven't worked out and I've been wondering, well, what about just simply leaving, you know, buy property and sell my home and just simply move off grid and, and you know, be closer to my parents and stuff like that. What about that? That very well could come to pass. Who knows? We'll see. I... I don't know. I don't have any plans or any details or anything to work out, but take one step at a time and see where things go, I guess. Overall, the peace, the quiet, the lack of drama. Well, I will probably pull up a, um, a video of uh, The Forest, the game that I've been playing, because that's a great inspiration for this, of just how beautiful it is to be in an area where it's peaceful and quiet minus the cannibals and the mutants in that game that are chasing you down minus that because frankly that's part of the appeal of the game you crash along with your son and you have to quote unquote find your son and survive in this forest on an island and it's really cool because it's like it's a building uh, it's a survival slash It's some kind of a cool building simulator plus survival simulator. And they do it really well, and the game came out like six years ago, and it's, honestly, they don't have any support anymore because they're focusing on the sequel, but whatever. Point in case, it's very beautiful, very much like addictive in, this, in the whole like, yeah, I, I really do kind of want to get away from society and, and check out. But, if there's a period of time where we're supposed to do that, maybe for our well-being and our health, where we stop working our current job and we we change up, sure. But to simply drop out from society, I don't think that's what is needed. Plus, I know some people get bored and they're like, man, I need to do something. I want to do something. And as I talked to a good friend of mine earlier some work people genuinely find to be like this isn't work this is something that I love doing and it does kind of put a perspective the whole like workaholics that's how some genuinely feel this isn't work this is something that they love doing but they love doing it so much it creates issues and problems in their own home and possibly uh, marriages and families and all that <sighs> overall I think Better Bachelor stumbled upon something that is worth mentioning here because it can create a rather nasty situation here in the rest of society. Men get tossed around and treated pretty badly enough as it is, and I'm right there in the midst of it. Or else I... who knows? Who knows where I'd be if I was in a different place and a couple things have changed and I wasn't where I'm at now. Who knows? But as it is... I pretty much get ignored and treated like crap like many other people and it's just it frankly it sucks lack of disrespect and the lack of um, fair treatment is astonishing and it's very hard for women single married most of them can't understand they just go right back to their own problems and issues because that's what they do understand so I, I just anyway it's hard that being said, I don't think checking out is the answer, but I think it could be a solution, just to summarize everything. Now, I don't actually think it's wrong, but 
if you do so, make sure you do so for the right reasons. I think there is some truth to the going monk mode as far as with some of the the Catholic Church, the preachers, uh, not preachers, um, the ones who are setting aside time to spend, I'm no expert, but the, the men who set aside time to chase after God and their relationship with God and to put all distractions aside, I think there is an answer that lies there as far as building that relationship and again removing distractions and all of that the noise in the background I did a video on that like two years ago this is important because there's going to be everything pulling at our, our time our, our, our money our other resources um, us, our energy like four things right off the bat there so we are finite we have a limited amount of supply that we have to manage but when it's all spent and it's all gone finding a way to lower all of that and to change or pass on the responsibilities should probably be focused on for your own health and your well your own mental well-being digging yourself into an early grave doesn't do anyone any good you know pass on some of the responsibilities so others can help bear bear them is also supported biblically also it is that is referenced by the apostles in the new testament as far as you know bear one another's burdens okay i think i will move on to another couple of thoughts that i have that i'll be working on going back to the intimacy video and i did fully talk about it but it's it's got a copyright label over it which i noticed there's probably maybe one view at all but it's due to the copyright not ever putting it on the algorithm the i i talked about the idea about wanting to focus more on intimacy and you know what would that look like if that was something i could nail down get a couple of uh get a couple of uh reefs uh, Get some people together, get a game plan together, get the equipment and all of this. But here's the problem, and I already pointed out to, to my friend here as far as, well, there's, there's multiple problems. One, society at large has taken a lot of value away from intimacy, and they tend to put the whole value of intimacy, like, this is what intimacy, intimacy is, it's sex, which is wrong, it's incorrect. It's like they completely ignore the relationship side. They they completely relate some of the, the parts that are needed to make a relationship work, for intimacy to work. And they just go straight from the work, skip the work completely, and go straight to the fun parts, the whole sex part. However, intimacy is lacking. People are struggling from it. And it is causing massive amounts of issues for men and women alike. But it, it it's differently. It, it, it looks different to um, both sex, sexes. I want to say that I, the way I was introduced to some things have given me a unique point of view on this that has stuck with me for years because we are all chasing intimacy in one way or another. It's obviously not through relationships for the majority of people these days. It's, it's basically chasing it through sex, which is incorrect. Mostly because it doesn't fill anything and you're still left feeling very empty and hurt and um, uh, uh, starving, for lack of a better word, afterwards. Being touch deprived is a big part of this too, from like a friendly hug you know, the non-sexual stuff, like a, the, a hug, handshake, shoulder slap, a back slap, something, something there. It's just like, shit, can I get something here? Yeah, it's it's uh, it gets brutal, and it really wears people down when they don't get anything like that, especially men. Women, that's not something I really want to talk about, because... They're, the way they handle things is very different. 
So, love them, but ba basically briefly mention them and say that this is handled very differently and then just go right back to men. Mostly because I can't. Most of my issues and conversations do not revolve around women. They just include women in them. I'm not a woman after all. If I could talk to more women and record their thoughts and what their perspectives on some things, I would do so in a heartbeat. But so far that has not popped up and that is a small regret of mine because the review is important, but hey, if they don't want to speak out, I can't do anything about that. So yeah, intimacy. I would love to show that off if that was possible and if that is a healthy thing that could be done. And the last question is one of the hardest ones. Would intimacy still be the same if it were able to be captured and shown off appropriately? I know the question, would nudity be there, which would be a yes. It wouldn't be, and then the whole like, how would that be shown without it being turned into porn, which is a big problem. Porn is part of the reason why many people are addicted and having their brain rewired in the first place. And on top of that, carnal knowledge is a very real thing because once you're aware of something, you're gonna want more of it. It's gonna be a baggage. It's gonna be something that ends up putting a force on you that you have to respond. And usually people allow certain things to change them. That's why they are always so struggling. That is why they are always in a worse place no. That's why they're always, we always struggle with things until we can find a solution or answer or to somehow better ourselves years later down the road. Almost all of the stuff that we get, you know, that we bring into our lives takes years to deal with. To understand the ramifications, to understand what we introduce to our lives as far as addictions and strongholds. This stuff is relevant, but it takes years to remove. Seconds to accept in and to unlock the door and years to remove, or years to settle, so to speak. Because sometimes kids kids are, uh, they are introduced, so to speak, through a unwanted um, birth or, or whatever, and now they're in the picture. So then you have to deal with that. Seconds of pleasure, years of regret. So anyway, part of me realizes the church has mishandled and just simply dropped a ball on this stuff. And it's bothered me to the point where I was, it's part of the reason why I'm doing this channel anyway. Intimacy should never be mishandled. It should never be dropped. It should never be abused. It needs to be handled properly. This is a part of the human life, the human experience. And... There's probably no right answer. There's just better answers and worse answers. And of course, there's all these, uh, the people out there trying to monetize all of this stuff and be like, yep, this is what you need in order to uh, deal with it. And they try to sell things off as if they're products. Sell parts of our lives back to us as if we are just the consumers. And that is very much a problem in itself. That is, of course, tied to free will and the way the U.S. is with um, uh, focus on business and all of that stuff. You can do what you want, but just make sure that what you're doing is the right thing, you know, and that what you're setting up is what you want to stay set up. Too many people hit their 30s and 40s and have regrets, and they don't like where they're at they're they're miserable and they are frustrated and that raises up a whole bunch of problems so anyway yeah i would love to deal with uh to get this thing with intimacy knocked out but frankly all i can do is scratch my head and write down ideas and see what can happen and who knows who knows what will be set up man this stuff's important I want to say that with the young men that I've seen and talked to, this has been a very big problem because young men who do not have future relationships to work towards, no women, what then? In fact, with the way some things have gone, 
they've ended up just uh, trying to focus on same-sex relationships, trying to fill that void. Of course, the whole sexual side blooms out of control, and that is a very serious issue because that will directly turn into a lifestyle that will permanently affect them. And in fact, I want to say I want to I want to go a step further, but I can't because I don't have. I can't confirm some of this stuff. All I know is that abuse and trauma is definitely a part of this with what I have seen with uh, broken homes and uh, these uh, struggling younger men attempting to find a way in this world. I can at least say that. A lack of trust and abusive parents, they can really do a number on your life. Well, a lack of trust from your parents because you know of drugs, alcohol, or, or whatever. Sometimes spouses are only together because they're kids, not because they actually love each other. That, that, that's a whole other can of worms. Well, that's it. That's pretty much it as far as with uh, video with Better Bachelor and all that. But, um, man, it kind of hit me hard because there's actually a name to all this. Going John Walter or whatever. Going John, um, man. Ugh. To think that checking out from society, things have gone so bad that people are openly talking about this, advocating for this. I'm just shaking my head. I guess that's the difference between men outside the church and men inside the church is, you know, our answers are going to look different because of what we value, what we care about, and, and all of this. And let's be honest, the future that we see is very different for Christians and non-Christians alike. Until next time.